In this live self-defense lesson online, I want you to practice Kali martial arts for self-defense. You have a Kali stick. Kali stick is about as long as your arm. It's also known as an Eskrima stick or also known as Arnis. So you can find them all under those three different names. Generally, it's in the Filipino martial arts, Indonesian martial arts, other martial arts, and the Baja Pahit. It's an ancient kingdom diaspora, whatever that means. If you want to look it up, Google it, that's what you're looking for. K-A-L-I or E-S-C-R-I-M-A or A-R-N-I-S. Those are all broad terms. There are a lot of styles within that. This is a simple warm-up I want you to do. You're just turning your sticks back and forth, starting to lubricate the joints, get blood to flow into your wrists, into your forearm, stay safe from injury. Then the second thing you're gonna do is you're gonna hold your collie stick here so the little bit is coming out of the bottom. The purpose of that is that you're going to always be learning how to strike with this end. This is also a way that you can strip a weapon out of somebody's hands. It's good to see you, I'm glad you caught me live. From here, with one in each hand, I want you to do a turning or twisting motion. Some people call it twirling, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter to me, but keep your hands closed. You're simply pushing your palm to face the sky, the thumb comes back, the stick is coming behind your head in a forward spin, and then after about 30 seconds, you're gonna reverse it. You'll see that your hand will open a little bit doesn't have to stay completely tight. I don't want you to have rigid hands. They should be closed and relaxed at the same time. JCA Drumming says, appreciate your drum or instruction. I appreciate you being here, JCA Drumming. Thank you very much. You're going forward. If you like this kind of instruction, please give me a thumbs up. If you like self-defense or martial arts or just training, learning something new, give me a thumbs up, please. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. After 30 seconds, bring it back. You just want to properly warm up when you're learning how to fight with sticks for self-defense or how to hit somebody with a stick for self-defense, or in this case, Kali martial arts for self-defense. You want to be properly warmed up. From here, you're going to bring it back and forth, up and down. Machachu says, taken to the Joe. Yes, the Joe is one of my favorite martial arts weapons as well. Also doubles as a walking stick or hiking stick. This motion, you can see, I'm just swinging back and forth. You're going to be practicing striking hard when you learn Kali martial arts for self-defense. David, it's good to see you. Good. David's training is in Kali martial arts. Awesome. David, this is not going to be traditional instruction. This is going to be more modified using some of those traditional parts of Kali martial arts just for self-defense. Now, from here, I want you to increase the range of motion in your stretch by straightening your arm out so that your arms go more straight. It might lift up your shirt. So if you're concerned about your belly, suck it in. Or don't be concerned, just get it done. After that, you're gonna split it so that now you're getting a better range of motion. You're starting to really loosen up those shoulders, build power in the joint. You wanna get as strong as you possibly can. Then, I want you to start with it on your shoulders you're going to do that spinning motion again that we did in the warm-up. You're going to spin it as you go down and spin it as you go up. And again, if you like Kali martial arts or any stick fighting, self-defense, martial arts in general, please give me a thumbs up. Help me grow this channel. Just up and down. If you want, you can add a second spin or a third or a fourth. Loosen up those wrists. Build power in the wrists. This is also, this kind of spinning is gonna allow you to strike a lot more force when you get into using Kali martial arts for self-defense. Using that stick in a defensive manner, you need as much power as you can generate on some of these strikes. So add that spin as you go down, as you come up, if you wanna get fancy, you do one hand at a time and then you can try to alternate your hands as you go through. It's not essentially or completely critical. Oh, good. You've, you've trained with the best then. Bringing it back and forth. There are a lot of amazing Kali instructors out there in the world. He's definitely one of the top. Going 
back and forth, back and forth. If you want to get super fancy, start with them on your shoulders, bring them forward and back, almost like a strike. Try not to hit that bag. Here we go, move it out and go forward. All right, and that's all to warm up your wrists, to build power in your forearm, to loosen your uh, joints, strengthen your wrists, strengthen the hands, all so that you don't lose the stick when you're fighting. Now, you're not necessarily going to be fighting with some of the, what we call a Sinawali pattern, but it just comes out of us naturally, right? As you practice, you go into it. And we might go over that here in a bit, but I want you to put one stick down for now and practice with me just some basic strikes coming off the shoulder and through the body. And as you do that, notice that I'm pushing and trying to come through a full range of motion. I want you to do that as far as you can and notice that your arm is not out here. You're not swinging the arm. You are slicing with the hand, pulling almost like you would a sword, a Japanese katana. You're pulling with the bottom part of the hand through the body. Good, Doug says, training with collie sticks has helped the shoulder. Amazing for the shoulders, right? Hello, Doug, it's good to see you. Um, summer, yes, Doug, summer snap and summer are push. So some are going to pop, you're going to retrieve them. Sometimes you're going to follow through. It depends on what you need. And when we talk specifically for self-defense, it becomes very important that you do what's going to work for self-defense. That's when we have to depart from some of the hard and fast rules of the traditional ways of learning things and think about what's practical. We know from the police baton training that when you get two hands on it, you're stronger. But you can say, well, you know, I might have another stick in the other hand. Well, whatever, if you want to, put the two sticks together like this, and then thrust the two hands, right? That's one option. Or my favorite thing is put one down and use one stick to push. You're gonna do a multiple um, mixture, blended styles, blended things with your collie sticks that you wouldn't do in a traditional martial arts, learning the aesthetics of the martial art, learning the esoteric values, learning the history, the tradition, being true to the Majapahi kingdom. And some of you know what I'm talking about when I just want to say it that way. Some people get really stuck in those boxes. I want you to get out of that box, crush the box, blast it apart, throw it in the trash, because we're talking about self-defense. And in self-defense, the techniques become less valuable. Hello from Denver. Lydia, it's good to see you. Thank you. I appreciate you being here. When we talk self-defense, we talk principles. Principles of self-defense, number one is situational awareness. Pay attention to what's happening as it's happening right now. Put your phone in your pocket. If you need to look at it, put your back against the wall, hold it up so you can see what's going around. But that's number one, situational awareness. See it before it becomes a threat to you, and then you can respond. Run, hide, fight. When you have to fight, when we use the collie stick for self-defense, collie martial arts for self-defense, we're gonna think in terms of two-handed thrusts, one-handed thrusts, striking from that shoulder. So as you practice, always bringing it from your shoulder and it stops because the bag is there. If the bag isn't there, you're going to follow through, right? With the bag, you can also follow through in your strike and you're gonna develop a more powerful strike. A lot of Kali practitioners uh, Filipino martial arts practitioner, FMA, our knees, the screaming, like to use tires. Tires are really good because when you hit a tire, it causes resistance, it bounces back, and you have to con control that stick by practicing on something like that. The bag doesn't push back, but striking on something that does push back, it's going to start to build more dense muscle fibers. It's going to help tighten up your tendons and your joints so that when you fight, you're gonna hit for self-defense. You're gonna hit so much more powerful. Now there's a link below that have the exact dimensions of the stick. I, I, I'm just gonna say generally about as long as your arm from your fingertip to your uh, armpit. This is an inch in diameter. This is a um, hickory self-defense stick. David asks, are you in the chamber position for self-defense? In chamber position, I like this. I like both sticks between me in the threat. If he has a knife or a bladed weapon or something that I don't know about, either he might pull out or he's got a, a baseball bat, a tire iron, a golf club. You're seeing a lot of those with the Antifa thugs. 
popping out with golf clubs these days. If he has a weapon, he has length, he has reach advantage. I want you to have a reach advantage too. So I want you to be able to, you can use this in a one-handed thrust. It's going to be very powerful because you're going to do it very quickly and you're taking the end of this and you're sticking it through his nose, into his eyes, into his teeth, into his throat. Because you ask yourself, this is a principle of self-defense. What can you remove or destroy for self-defense? Number one principle, situational awareness. Number two, get in a better position. Put the sticks between you and him. Now, if you look here, I'm interrupting your line of sight. I'm making it hard for you to see me. That's a pattern interrupt. You get some thug who's used to coming around threatening people, especially skateboards. Think um, all these thugs that, that intimidate people because inside, and they wear a mask because they're a coward. That's just my personal opinion. But anyway, they come around and what happens is most people cower. When, they, when the person cowers, the thug, the criminal, they embolden, they become more confident in hurting somebody else. If you now stick your sticks between you and him, you take this posture of self-defense, and here's a disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer, this is not legal advice, I'm saying if you need to physically defend yourself, run, hide, fight, but if you have the ability to pick up a stick, and this is why I advocate for, t for learning how to fight with sticks, especially Kali sticks, Kali martial arts, Eskrima, Arnis, is that you can find sticks. They might not be this length, might not be the same material, but you can find a version of a stick or make a stick, roll up a magazine, make a stick that you can then use because you've practiced with Kali sticks, you now know how to fight and defend yourself with a, a rolled up piece of paper or a magazine or a, an improvised other, some other kind of stick, maybe a spatula or um, at the, the thing that cleans the windows at the uh, gas station, whatever you can pick up as a stick. Yeah, and Doug says one stick allows for usage of the other hand. So if you have two sticks, if you're gonna use, defend yourself with two sticks, put them between you, don't chamber. If you have one, leave the other hand open, as Doug says. You can use this to drive into his face. From here, now I can thrust, I can push, I can box his ears, I can drop down a lower level and stick that into his midsection, knocking him back. I can bring that through and break a leg or a knee, go for the joints because the joints break easier than the bones. For self-defense, legal disclaimer, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm just telling you if you have to physically defend yourself and your only option is a stick because it's multiple attackers, it's a bigger opponent, it's somebody with some type of a weapon, put it between you and him. From here, you can put the other hand on it and simply thrust this way. If you need to, you can drive the elbow there, take this one off and strike. Put it back on and defend. Moving back, and you have this other hand, as Doug is saying, that you can defend yourself with. So starting on your shoulder, put your put it on your in your right hand if you're right-handed, and your left hand if you're left-handed. Practice your strong side first, and then practice your not strong side and become ambidextrous. Get into a better position. That's the second rule, second principle of self-defense. Number one, situation awareness. Number two, better position. Your stick between you and the threat. Always fight behind your stick, right? Number three, ask yourself a question. What can you remove or destroy for self-defense? Take a deep breath. Yeah, Garen says you can do that with the Hanbo too. The Hanbo is the 36 inch walking stick. You can do it with the Tanbo, which is 16 to 18 inches, which is shorter than this stick. I think this one's about 28 inches. From here, you can do it with a, with a 12 inch stick. You can do that with the, um, what we call it, the, the yawara, the hand, the palm stick, or the uh, kubaton, which is based on the yawara. You can do that with a small stick. You can take a marker, put it between you and the threat, and jab, right, thrust. Bring it around, thrust here. He's behind you, bring it from here, down into him that way. So you're from here, I want you to practice a simple thrust, come from your shoulder, strike, always follow through, and go slowly at first. I want you to do 30 seconds of this strike. Just put a timer on or count in your head. One Mississippi, two. And then count the strikes, not the number of strikes, but 30 seconds of strikes. And as you strike, you should be getting stronger and faster and more violent in the strike for self-defense. You have to get used to the way it feels when you're going all in. And then if you have something to strike, practice as hard as you can in that strike for self-defense. To get more power to stop the fight for self-defense, 
you need to extend the arm, turn the shoulders and the hips, and when possible, step into it. Either stepping through the other foot, you can see in the mirror behind me, my right foot is back, I step through, now my right foot is forward, or you can step with the front foot, almost like you're using a foil in fencing, bringing it forward. Either way, it doesn't matter, as long as you get your body in motion. So to generate more power, stopping power, knock, knockout power, stop the fight power, you have to move your body, extend the arm, turn your shoulders and hips. Now, if you've been practicing, especially with Grandmaster Prezes, anybody else in self, Dan and Asanto, um, if you've done Dolce Perez, you've done any of the traditional ones, you can see that we've, we've departed far from the uh, curriculum guide or the syllabus of a traditional Kali or Nis Eskrima self-defense class or martial arts class. And that's because we're talking self-defense, which is a totally different beast. Martial arts lives here, self-defense lives here. There's a crossover in the middle of techniques, but the principles are different, right? The principle of self-defense, number one, situation awareness, pay attention, what's happening at all times. Number two, get in a better position. Put the stick between you and the threat. Number three, uh, red oak is good as hickory. Red oak usually comes from uh, Pakistan or somewhere in Asia, China a lot of times. And the problem with the red oak that you get from, the question was, is red oak good for a staff or a self-defense tool? Usually they're dry on the inside. So you can take that red oak staff and you have to sand off the finish, the factory finish, and then get it down to bare wood and then soak it in oil, mineral oil, boiled linseed oil, even coconut oil, but soak it really well over a period of weeks and get that wood moist again. If you look at this, this comes from the factory. This is a self-defense collie stick. This is not the um, Eskrima, our niece, I have a whole uh, corner full of rattan, which is a, a grass. This is hickory, which is a wood. It's a very different thing. This is 10 times heavier. When you strike this, this is gonna shatter bones for self-defense. That's why it's the first link below. There's another link below that says martial arts stuff. You can get these, you can get practice ones made out of a much lighter material. But when it's about self-defense, for the red oak, get it moist, it'll be perfect for that but you've got to get that moisture back in the stick. These are soaked for a period of two or three days in a special polymer mix that's like a trade secret from Cane Masters. They make amazing self-defense fighting canes. They also make my self-defense Kali martial arts stick. It's the first link below. But when you're learning Kali martial arts for self-defense, you want to get into a better position, ask yourself the question, what can you remove or destroy? That's going to tell you your next step. And when you do that, when you ask yourself that question, always take a deep breath. That breath will center and calm you down just a little bit. It just takes the edge off just a little bit. You're still going to be nervous. You're still going to be frightened. You're still going to be terrified, but you're going to be prepared. You're going to take that breath and that fear, that anxiety, that nervousness is going to switch. You're going to flip a switch in your head because you've trained and it's going to become indignant. And you're going to say, how dare you? How dare you try to take my life or take my freedom or take my dignity or hurt me or hurt my family? And you're going to ask yourself that question. What can I remove or destroy? His ability to see you temporarily or permanently or temporarily, his ability to breathe temporarily, permanently, his ability to breathe or stand upright, his ability to execute an attack because you smashed through his wrist or his hand or his forearm or his elbow or his shoulder, that hard, fast power strike, turning your shoulders and hips, driving from your shoulder. And this is very important driving from your shoulder from here to here is, is the retain a vine. Is that what you're saying, Garen? But you're coming from here to here. And as you come through, you're extending that arm, turning your shoulders and hips. And it is a slicing motion, but it has to be here in front of you. It's very important. If it's here swinging in the way somebody who's untrained would swing, and this is the answer to what happens if someone's trying to hit you with a stick. Usually, they're untrained. All you have to do is close the distance and they're gonna wrap their arm around you. When you close that distance, put your helmet on and drive your elbow through his face for self-defense. So if he's swinging a stick at you, you're gonna come straight in, get as close as you can. The worst thing you can do is back up. When you back up, he goes full power. When you come in, he doesn't get anything except the elbow right in your face or in your throat for self-defense. Legal disclaimer, I'm not advocating hurting anybody. I'm advocating for you 
to defend yourself. So thrust, strike through, strike through. Practice these motions in combinations. As I said before, start slowly and then start to put 100% into it. Put two hands on it and thrust. Two hands, thrust. When you do this two-handed strike, bend your knees, change your levels. That's going to change the game completely. He's up here coming at you. You're down here coming up into him. It's an old police baton technique. When you get on the riot line, they start thumping on their riot things, whatever. But when they bend the knees, that's because they understand because they've done it so many times for real in real application in prisons over and over. When the, the prisoners come out and they're up here fighting, they get lower and then they come up. It's the same thing with a bayonet attack using your rifle and your bayonet when you run out of bullets in the war. You change levels, you get lower, you have good balance here. See how my knees are bent in the mirror behind me? From here, now you can thrust. Pull it in, push this way. Box to the ears. Come out with a strike coming straight down. See how that comes through my center line, through your center line? Always practice that strike through the center line. Make sure it's not out here. It's not doing anything out here. From here to come to here. So from here, one more time. I want you to practice thrust from the angles coming down. You can also go horizontally through your strikes. You can practice these vertical strikes. You can practice thrusting up this way. Put the other hand, bend the knees, and push. Coming through, aim for his center line. Anywhere you hit him in the center line, you're gonna drive him back. I don't care how big and strong he is. At the end of your stick, with two hands on it, your whole body is pushing in. He's not coming through that stick. Wherever it hits him, it's moving him back. It could be fatal for self-defense if it has to, when you learn how to use Kali martial arts sticks for self-defense. From here, and then turn it and push. Use this big bar. In this case, again, this is hickory. Big bar hickory through his nose, through his teeth, through his throat, even into his body. And then pushing the sides, boxing his ears, breaking the ribs for self-defense. And then covering, see how I cover up again and put my helmet on? Cover up, coming back. Now you can run and get out of there. If he's on the ground, he can't chase after you for self-defense. If, if you have to do that, you have to do that. That's the whole point. It's not, it's not to make you an aggressive person, a mean person. It's not for you to fight people. It's not for you to go looking for fights. Don't do that. I will tell you legally, that's gonna get you in trouble. I'm not a lawyer, but if you learn how to use this for self-defense, all these motions look defensive. You put your hands up, you use verbal commands back up, don't come any closer. I will defend myself. Stop. Your hand is open, right? This hand is always open when you have two hands. That tells everybody around you that you're trying to stop, that that guy's the aggressor. He's coming out of you with that skateboard or swinging a baseball bat. You happen to pick up a stick that was nearby for self-defense. That's, I think that's within reason for you to defend yourself, but that's not for me to say because I'm not a lawyer. Anyway, this is how to use a collie stick, collie stick or collie martial arts for self-defense. It's super simple when you keep the principles in mind. Number one, situation awareness. Number two, get in a better position. Stick between you and the threat. Always behind your stick, always. Number three, what can you remove or destroy? And remember to take that breath to center, focus your mind, and flip that switch in your head from fear to taking action, right? Indignant. I can't believe you're doing this to me. I will not be a victim today. You will back up. I will defend myself. I will defend my family. It's my human right. God gave me that right. Not man. There's no law that says that I'm allowed to defend myself. It's a God-given right. That's, what, that's all I'm saying. Then you go to work, right? There are other principles of self-defense, but if you remember those three, you'll be in good hands. Number one, Pay attention to what's happening while it's happening. Situation awareness. Number two, get to a better position. Write these down if you haven't done so already. Number three, take a breath. This is critical. This is the most important part. What can you remove or destroy for self-defense? And think in terms of his ability to see, be awake, knock him out. If that's the best if you can. His ability to breathe temporarily, permanently. His ability to hurt you with his hands, with his feet. Yeah, as Doug said, slows the heart rate. A breath slows the heart rate. And, and sometimes you won't remember to take a breath until you've trained yourself. Take a breath. What can I remember to destroy? Anchor the breath with the question and you'll do it every time without thinking about it. And then you will be able to defend yourself using the Kali martial arts sticks for self-defense. 
Let me know in the comment section below what you train with, what you like to train with. If you haven't done so, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for all of your generous donations. I'm starting to see people hitting the thanks button. It takes a while after the video has been live for a day or so. People come back and they're hitting the thanks. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you guys a little bit later. I have five more classes tonight. I've done six so far. This is my favorite time of the day when I have this halfway point. And I know I'm close to the end, but the rest of them are all self-defense. And it's just all groups. This is the, self the time of the year that I teach self-defense the most. So it's top of my mind. I'm saying this over and over and we're doing constant work on this stuff. I'm glad that I have you with me. Thank you, Lydia. Thanks for being here. I'll see you guys in a little bit.